search for a gene, a variant, a region. We're going to add phenotype level search as well. But you can browse the phenotypes through uh, these drop downs. So, for example, if you're interested in uh, hypertension or asthma or high cholesterol, you can click on asthma or you can search for a phenotype. Um, we also have family history level data that's included. We're going to include more uh, phenotypes. Actually, there's a load coming out tonight. Uh, and another big load coming in with, uh, with Benjamin Neal's lab as well that would bring in some of the imputation data. The nice property about this is that you can also restrict uh, the focus of the variants to missense and PTVs or PTVs. As we've mentioned uh, in the talk, the UK Biobank consisted of a pretty strong component of coding variants in addition to other type of variants that are well represented in GWAS catalogs, for example. Um, so here, if you click on MissNSMPTV, you can uh, focus, zoom in on the coding variant and uh, really zoom in on either loss of function or missense variants. Uh, here, for example, you see G GSDMB prioritized, you see IL-1, RL-1. Uh, so a good way to explore the data. IL-33 is also shown here. You, the other feature is that you can click on the variant and it takes you to this variant page, which gives you the FIWAS uh, style level of representation, where on the y-axis you have the minus log 10 p-value, on the x-axis you have the phenotype coding. Uh, if you want to know what phenotype it represents, you overlay over the circle and there will give you more description about the phenotype. For example, here you can see that it's corresponding to asthma. Here you can see that it's corresponding to another grouping of asthma, which is strictly based on hospital and patient record data. The, this one here is strictly based, is, is, is composed of both hospital and patient record data and verbal questionnaire data. So showcasing the, the value of uh, verbal questionnaire data. Hay fever, allergy, and nasal polyps. Uh, and to go to Ed Skolnick's question, for example, if you did want to jump to a particular gene, SLC39A8, you can search for the gene symbol, and it'll take you to uh, the content that exists for that particular gene. Um, the variant that uh, Ed would be interested in would be this top missense variant here that's about 8% minor allele frequency in the UK Biobank. In the gene table, what we represent is the phenotype that is, has the strongest level of association but in addition to that, you can click on the variant itself to get this FIWAS style uh, representation. So, for example, you know, given that there is a strong interest in this particular variant, we can click on it and it will take us to this FIWAS page again. Mm. And you can start seeing its pleiotropic effects across a broad range of phenotypes. Mm. So osteoarthritis, hypertension, uh, other joint disorders, arthritis, hiatus, hernia urinary frequency, incontinence, uh, gastroesophageal reflux disease. So there's nice ways to explore this data. It's definitely SOC 3988 is one of those where it's quite, quite biotropic effect. Uh, so it's a really nice variant to, to pursue. The other features that we did want to highlight um, was the ability to also look at these aggregate or gene-based results. And it's exciting where there are multiple variants per gene what we've done now is to start, uh, what we're doing is now to start prioritize sets of genes that seem to be implicated, sorry, sets of phenotypes that seem to be implicated through uh, the coding content in, in the UK Biobank data. So uh, here you see log 10 base factors, similar to just saying a log score of 8.03 uh, to this particular phenotype. And if you did want to explore the phenotype a bit more, you can click on it and it'll take you to the osteoarthritis page. If you wanted to look at the top hits for osteoarthritis for gene-based results, you click on the gene-based results link and it takes you to a page describing the top genes for that particular phenotype across all genes. And you can see in this setting that at least for osteoarthritis, the top gene associated to osteoarthritis is SLC3988, and you can get have a look down as to what other genes have been implicated. For, 
many at Dennis. One question. What, is, what exactly does this gene-based... Um, uh, great, qu great question. So it's similar, analogous to what SCAT does with uh, uh, multiple variants, uh, the, except that it's in a Bayesian model, right? So in terms of thinking about the model itself, it, assuming there is non-zero variance of effect sizes uh, across the variants that it's analyzed. So basically, if there is at least one variant with non-zero effect, it will show some level of evidence of association to does, the gene. Does it correct for LD? Great question. At this, the, what's here in the UK Biobank pages, it doesn't correct for LD, so that's a great question. Um, when in, in, in the setup, the model itself, though, we do have a correction for LD. Um, we're going to bring in the LD matrices into the UK Biobank engine, um, I think, in the next week. And the way we're going to bring it is through both um, visualization of LD patterns across variants, in addition to that, uh, incorporation into this method that actually does consider LD, but uh, the LD matrix is not included in the database yet. So you're going to see that updated in, in uh, shortly. Yep. The uh, for the PTVs because the analysis was done between 0.01% and 1%. Uh, here it's okay to look at these without worrying about LD patterns affecting the result. Great question. The other thing that we're starting to support as well is, of course, this uh, Power app that that Chris briefly mentioned. What the Power app does is allows you to evaluate for a particular gene across multiple PTVs if um, if your population of interest uh, may have enough power to detect association for a study design that you may be interested in pursuing. Uh, the other th and and the source data set for this Power app is of course a combination of genetic data from Nomad, which is the reference uh, frequency summary data that the Broad put together in addition to UK Biobank, our hope is to start bringing in additional biobanks with their at least some form of summary level data and representing and giving you a global view as to, you know, even if you're interested in a particular gene, to begin with, would you have the ability to say anything about uh, a specific phenotype that you're interested in? The, uh, if you click on the table uh, uh, tab, uh, it'll give you some of the information that is being displayed in the plot. But in addition to that, it also gives you the composite allele frequency of PTVs across different populations, uh, which may give you a better sense as to what's driving these power estimates. Um, so, so with that said, you know, it's a good, it's a nice engine to explore at this moment in time. It's at the pre-office stage. Our hope then next is to bring in uh, different ways of looking at the data. So first, as we start reporting results, uh, what we're going to do is to feature them here. So for example, the PTV paper, the results will have a way for you to explore them. Uh, the, there will also be, there's also support for a targeted uh, 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 way of looking at things. So for example, if your question is, can you identify the missense or PTVs with effect size consistent with protection, uh, can you show them to me in a drop down table? And those are the things that we'll include. The other things that we will include are joint models of, 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 of looking at all these summary level data together. And that, those are more advanced techniques that will be rolled out uh, down the line. At this, the initial uh, motivation for setting this up was really for us to put this in a database together in addition to uh, highlighting summary level data that the community is well accustomed to looking at. Um, and, and slowly but surely we'll start rolling out new features. Okay, that's it. Uh, many of you, just a quick question. So what is the big difference between, uh, between the data which is currently online available and the one which is coming from Ben? All right, who is them and which is the one available? So, you know, uh, um, uh, Ben, so from Ben uh, here from Broad. Uh, ben. Great question, Ben, Ben. Uh, yeah, so, the, so Ben, uh, so the way the split was done was that Ben was responsible for the imputation data and I took care of the coding variant data and the, and the, and the and the directly genotype data. Ah, so the, we get basically for all of those features, you might get um, different uh, or more results in the non-coding area. 
Exactly. So the, so the non-coding, so anything that's uh, relevant for non-coding analysis, uh, you know, the other thing is that the, actually the imputation data does recover a bit of the missense variants that were missed out by the array. Uh, here you can see from uh, Chris's presentation that we recovered like about 500 PTVs that are not represented in uh, the array data. Uh, so, you know, the, the, the imputation does recover some of the low frequency and um, the, the most important part, of course, for the imputation really will be on the common variant non-coding uh, content that is missing out. The other thing to do remember is that the array content did include, um, actually, I think most of the GWAS catalog as of, 20, as of 2015. Um, so, so it still includes quite a comprehensive content. Uh, but but nonetheless, there's a lot of important content that is included in uh, that was provided by the UK Biobank data that we're now loading with with Ben's team that and that they've generated. The other component as well of the UK Biobank that was extremely informative uh, and that you also saw through Chris's presentation uh, that's not represented here at this moment in time is HLA allelotypes. So they've gone ahead and inferred allelotypes for all five uh, for all 488,000 individuals, and what we're going to do is start supporting that visualization as well, where we show um, across the HLA allelotypes that have been organized by UK Biobank what its association is with respect to other phenotypes. Nice. Um, are there any efforts in the future or collaborations uh, on the way regarding? Uh, mitochondrial types or copy number variants and in that regard? Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, what if, um, so what, for example, uh, what a Y chromosome type you are, like, or, my, or what kind of mitochondrial profile you have? Are the, is this covered on the array? Great question. So, um, so there is some Y chromosome content. I think there may be some mitochondrial content. Um, I, if, if anybody in the community organizes that data, then we'd be happy to, one thing, one way you can interact with the UK Biobank is that you provide that information to them and then they provide it to everybody else. And what we can do is basically take that, download it, run it against, um, the phenotypes that we've organized and, uh, up, update the Biobank engine to reflect its, its, its association. So. If there's anybody in here or anywhere else that's interested in the Y or mitochondrial um, uh, data and wants to contribute that to UK Biobank, then we'd be happy to then download that data and and um, and and run the analysis against. There is there is a student in my lab at least that's running some of the X chromosome analysis, um, and and we will be updating the engine with some X chromosome data as well. Cool, thanks. Are there any more questions from